Hello, my name is Sam McKenzie. Working with Howard Eichenbaum and others, we use electrophysiology to understand how information is stored in the brain. In a typical memory experiment, a naive animal will learn a new fact, and the memory for that fact will be tested at a subsequent time point. However, this is an unrealistic scenario, since rarely do we face new learning completely ignorant and naive. Therefore, we were interested in how a set of related memories are stored within the brain, and in particular, how the hippocampus stores and organizes that set of information. Theorists have hypothesized that the hippocampal role in memory is to create independent representations of experiences to ensure a lack of interference between similar memories. However, studies have shown that the hippocampus is involved in linking related memories, a computation that is not easily solved if each memory is stored independently of the next. Therefore, we have hypothesized that the hippocampus stores memory schemas in which related experiences are stored within overlapping networks. The hippocampus binds together elements that define an experience, but also links indirectly related aspects of experiences that share common aspects. It is unknown which coding scheme hippocampus uses to store and associate sets of related experiences. It is also unknown which dimensions of an experience define the structure of the representational space. To address these questions, we taught rats a set of related associations. Rats learn to associate objects with the spaces in which they occur. The items that the rats were learning about were scented terracotta pots that contained hidden food rewards. In one spatial context, here shown on the left, item A is rewarded. In the opposing spatial context, the reward contingencies are flipped and item B contains the hidden serial reward. Here you can see the rat correctly rejecting item B in context 1 and choosing item A. In the next clip, you can see the rat digging directly and the rewarded item B in context 2. Once rats learn the first item set, A and B, they then start to learn about a new set of items within the same space. Now trials can be related in several different dimensions of the animal's experience. Trials can be related by having the same or different items or having the same reward potential. The trials can also be related by occurring within the same positions or within the same or different contexts. We recorded from ensembles of cells in areas CA1 and CA3 of the rat hippocampus as animals sampled the four different pots in four different positions. Repetitions of the same item in the same position elicited similar patterns of activity. Trials with different items are associated with divergent patterns of activity, while trials that occurred in different contexts showed nearly opposite representations, with the cells that were active in one context being silenced in the other. We calculated the representational similarity of each sampling event with each other sampling event and these pairwise comparisons are shown in the similarity matrix. Related trials were well correlated. For example, trials with the same reward potential showed a high degree of coding similarity. Events with the same item in different positions were also associated with a relatively high degree of representational similarity, while events that occurred in opposing contexts showed anti-correlated patterns of activity. Repetitions of the same item in the same position showed the highest degree of representational similarity. Pairs of trials that differed by which item was present showed somewhat divergent firing patterns, which increased if the trials also differed by the reward valence. We observed this coding hierarchy when trials were taken from the same position or from different positions within the same context. Trials recording in a, recorded in opposing contexts were associated with anti-correlated firing patterns, showing strong pattern separation for these events. This coding hierarchy can be visualized using a dendrogram. Trials of the same items were coded most similarly, followed by trials of the same valence, and then trials that occurred within the same position. Trials in the opposing contexts were coded distinctly from one another. We were curious as to whether these different dimensions were coded conjunctively, or whether we could find evidence that they were expressed as distinct elements as animals sampled each of the items. Indeed, we found that each dimension was expressed successively at the start of each sampling event. First, position coding was evident, then coding about the identity of the items, and finally, information about the reward valence of the items drove divergent patterns in the ensemble representations. This suggests that the same cells code for different information at different times, and it is noteworthy that there are epochs in which all dimensions are significantly coded, suggesting binding of these elements at the level of the hippocampus. Finally, we were curious, when in training did this hierarchical coding emerge? Since animals were trained for three days on the first item set and then introduced to the second, 
we could look to see whether firing patterns that emerged during training on the first set generalized to the second. Even on the first day of training on the second item set, we found that different items of the same reward valence showed a high degree of representational similarity, as can be seen by the high correlations along the diagonal. The next highest correlations were between items of opposing valence within the same position. And finally, we again observed the anti-correlations between events that took place in opposing contexts. These data suggest that the hierarchical schema emerges early and that subsequent learning causes incremental changes to accommodate the new information. We use neural recordings to study how a set of related memories are stored and organized. However, it's not clear from this work whether the hierarchical schemas that we observed were brought about due to hippocampal processing or were inherited from an upstream bit of the brain. Longitudinal studies in which the same cells are recorded over days are required to watch the full evolution of these memory schemas. A clear prediction from this work is that the degree to which two memories are able to influence one another should depend on the overlap of their underlying representations. Furthermore, observing which corners of the memory space undergo plasticity during learning ought to have strong implications for the boundary conditions of reconsolidation studies and may also offer hints as to how information is stored within the brain.